We are up here in beautiful Stewart, Florida today. Brian, aka Quinn, we're on the boat, social distancing again, once again today. And we are fishing actually back to back days. So these video you're seeing, the last video you saw, we fished the day before. So we're out here again. <laughs> so two days in a row. Yeah, two days in a row, which we don't do a whole lot and we're pretty exhausted, but it's worth it. Today we got a cold front or some type of front pushing through. It's in mid Florida right now. We only have a few hours of fishing out there, so we're kind of racing against the clock right yeah. now and praying that we can get on our target species today, which would be a cobia. But we're gonna see what happens. We saw some yesterday, did not catch one, but today is a new day, so we're gonna have to see what happens. Yeah, we got uh, we're locked and loaded, we got chum and carcasses, and yep. we're gonna go to the spot we saw yesterday, and if we don't catch a cobia, then we're gonna try and catch something else that Putin can eat. Right, so, beautiful flat calm day right now. Yeah. Like we are taking advantage of the beautiful morning we're gonna be having. But calm this, before the storm. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna be blowing out of the north and we're, the seas are gonna kick up real rough. So right. we're, we're taking advantage before that happens. Right. We're at a quick sniper mission before 11 a.m. we gotta be in. Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's see what we can make do, let's go. Woo -woo. I got that one with the weight on it. Should I put a weight on that little rod or are you gonna keep that on top? Um, I'll put a weight on there. Do you, do you have a rubber band weight? So guys, we're at the first spot. We're gonna start a sand pile really quick. Uh, Kobe don't seem to be here too much lately, but we're gonna give it a shot, it's on the way. Darcy's rigging up. Uh, she got, we're using about a 50 pound liter on a heavy setup with an 8.0 hook. And uh, she has a hook tied on with a uni knot, I think. It's like a weight and a weight, and a weight on the line, with, so it's like a knocker rig. And it's using a heavy uh, or heavy spinning shark rod, which is a Cabo 80, with like 50 pound braid on there, and again, 50 pound leader. And uh, you know we gotta get these fish up right away because uh, there's so many sharks on these wrecks and sharks wherever Kobe are. So that's the deal. Let's see what happens. Want some stuff now? I did give you a weight. You saw it, didn't you? Is that market fish? Oh yeah. Okay, it's freaking out. Yours is, oh God. Get him, Sizzle. Feeling There we go. Let's go, woman. It's coming to the surface. Watch over. Not that big, not that big. All right, well. Woo! Hooked up. Get him up, get him up. Staying down. Watch that weight. Staying down now. Backing up. Backing up. Get up here. Watch your back. Oh boy. Which way? Oh boy. What do we do? Short rod. It's tough move. to get around. And I got him, forward. I got him, I got him. We're good. It's staying deep. I'm not sure what it might is. Probably AJ. AJ. Might AJ. Yeah. Let's get him up. I just cranked the drag some more. Oh, Smoking it. I don't know. You can put up you can put up a half. Come on, dude. It's going up now. It's going up. Real, real, real. Follow the fish. I'm trying, babe. I know. Wow, strong fish. Good. Darsh is on my jigging rod right now. But the sour goes at 8,000. Kick ass panta jigging rod. It's on the Doing surface. Great. It's on the surface. What do you got? It's on the surface. That's good news. Yes. Let's see what it is. We're going back. Oh, no. Big hope. Sit in the boat. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Shush. I'm on the boat. Brian. Brian. What? Right. Woo! Did it! Nice job, Brian. Oh. Put the key 
to a delicious. Back it up. Get up here. Watch your back. Oh boy. Oh boy. What do we do? I'm way under. Hold on. Short rod. It's tough to forward? get around. I got him. I got him. I got him. We're good. It's staying deep. I'm not sure what it is. Probably AJ. AJ. Might be AJ. Yeah. Let's get him up. I just cranked the drag some more. Oh, Smoking it. I don't know. You could put up. You can put up a half. Come on, dude. It's going up now. It's going up. Real, real, real. Follow the fish. I'm trying, babe. I know. Wow, strong fish. Good. Darsh is on my jigging rod right now. At the Saragosa 8000. Kick ass Panta jigging rod. It's on the surface. Great. It's on the surface. What do you got? It's on the surface. That's good news. Yes. Let's see what it is. We're going back. Oh no. Big hope. Sit in the boat. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Shush. I'm on the boat. Brian. Brian. What? Nice job, Brian. Nice job. Oh man. Scared that, the heck out of is me. Is that gonna be 30? Yeah, nice he's pretty fish. big. He's pretty big. Nice fish. He's gonna keep. He's gonna keep. He's gonna keep. <laughs> Just like that. Brian's rod again. Crushing yeah. it. I'll give Brian credit to that. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, he's dude. He's definitely gonna keep, right? He's big. Oh, he fought me good. He's big, right? That's a big fish. He's like 30 little... pounds. That's a solid fish right there, y'all. Woo! All right, as you can see, we got a 50 pound leader here on the sand pile first fish of the morning look at these crazy spines uh, you can see when they surface there you go look at that you do not want to get punctured by that and they literally look like a shark in the water which is the coolest thing ever Let's see i can pop this circle hook there we go circle hook is out 50 pound mono we're using that is a stud fish i will take it i am happy i think they gotta be what they gotta be 33 32 Something like that. 33 to the fork. Let's just get a quick measure in case right. he does need to go back, but I, I think know, it's like good. 30, 40. It's 36 right there. I mean, he flies past it. Heck yeah. <laughs> Heck he's yeah. 40. yeah. He's big. Heck yeah. He's a good fish. That's what I'm talking about. All right, here's the solid, the standard cobia hold. There you go. Yeah, baby. Nice fish. That's what we wanted to come out here. Within five minutes of fishing, we got one. So it's one per person, so we're allowed one more. But we've already got target acquired. Love when a plan comes together, baby. Beautiful fish. Woo! Catch clean cook coming up. We made it back to the house when we got home, even though it was a short fishing day. It started pouring out. It was nasty yesterday. We got a video posted, YouTube video, and before you know it, it was dark. So next day, gorgeous out. The front is gone, and now it's super hot again. Sorry, I had to take a little sip there. I'm thirsty out here. Let's dive right into our cooler and get our fish out. This is actually how you properly store fish too, by the way, guys, especially if you're not gonna be able to fillet them you know, within, within a 24 hour period. You lay them like vertically like they would be swimming in the water, I guess, perpendicular, or however you wanna call it. But that's how you would lay them down so that way the guts and stuff stay down and don't ruin your fish. And you just take proper care of them. And this guy is solid. He is super firm. And it's going to be nice and easy for me to fillet this guy. So let's close that up. Put him on the table here. And I am so stoked to show you how I like to fillet cobia here. But before I dive into it, these guys have some of the toughest skin swimming in the deep sea very similar to a shark it's leather like you probably could pull a trailer with it it's that thick and that tough it's insane so you really need a sharp knife so i'm going to use my nine inch smith fillet knife today 
and I, I took extra care to make sure it's super sharpened and I got a nice burr on the edge and then I just made it super sharp inside the house. And I just want to show you the variety of stuff Smith makes as far as sharpeners go here. You know, you can there's, they have a huge variety from where you go to fishing to hunting to camping. They have, I mean, this cheap one, very inexpensive with ceramic and carbide sharpener on either side. That's to, you know, use it out when you don't have time to sit there and use it with sharpening stone. They have the pocket pal with even serrated edge there to use for serrated edge knives. The uh, two-step one is the one I just showed you. This one is awesome too because it's a knife sharpener and a fish hook sharpener, which is what I got right here. Perfect for me on the boat. And they even have Jiffy Pro, the Jiffy Pro sharpener like this. They have such a variety of sharpeners. One of them has got to, you know, got to work for you. Never throw a dull knife away. Just take your time to sharpen it. Take a little bit of practice, but check out their website for the variety of stuff they make, even the adjustable sharpener right here where you adjust it to the correct size you want. And uh, that's pretty sweet too, including the diamond sharpening rod. So there's Sizzle 15 plus free shipping down in the description below. Check it out. Let me clean off this table and let's dive right into it. I got the fish flipped around, cleared the table off. I'm left-handed, so I like to start the fish on this side. And I'm sorry, guys, for the noise that you're going to start hearing here. A lot of people outside, and we're all in quarantine. It's a beautiful Florida day here, so can't complain whatsoever. Everybody's enjoying our sunshine. Let's dive right into this. Again, the nine-inch knife because I'm using, I have a bigger fish here today, and they're harder to fillet because again, I said their skin is super tough. But not only that, they're just shaped awkwardly, and their head is very weird. So it's kind of hard to hold on to. It does take some practice. I mean, you're not going to get good at this overnight. But you see, I just made that cut right there. Now we're just going to turn the knife around. And again, you really want a sharp knife because a dull knife is actually even more dangerous for you. And we're going to follow this backbone all the way down and make our first trace mark. You can see I'm just keeping the knife underneath. I mean, it is super tough skin. You have no idea. If you haven't played a cobia, one day when you do, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. Now push the knife through, make that cut right there. Whoops, <laughs> there goes the diamond sharpening rod. I hit the cameraman, put it. Okay, so now we made that trace mark. Now I'm gonna put the knife in there and follow the bones. And you see I'm keeping it bent. I really like a flexible knife, so that way I can follow the bones perfectly and just take my time here and get as much meat as we possibly can off this fish. So I made that mark, now another cut all the way down, and now I'm touching the spine bone. I can actually feel it. So now we're touching the spine bone. I'm just with the tip, gonna bend the knife and go over that spine bone and clear that off. There we go. Now up here by the head, fish always have pin bones sticking out, so you're gonna have to break through those no matter what with your knife. And that's what dulls your knife very quickly too. So you want to make sure you always have a sharpener handy with you. There's a couple more. Now once I got through there, now I'm going to angle the knife back down. past the spine bone so I can get down to where the rest of the, the delicious meat is. So many people love cobia. This is one of their favorite fish to eat. There's a variety of different ways you can cook this guy. You can barbecue them, you can sear them, you can fry them, bake them. I mean, the list goes on and on. They're just an excellent all around fish. Very mild flavor to it. It's delicious. You can see how I did that. Now I'll just take that last cut. And get them off of here. Oh yeah, look at that, heck yeah. One of my things is I really don't like to fillet the rib cage off. You see a lot of people do that where it's here attached to the fish. And I just feel like that really, you see those crazy bones? Like that's gonna fillet, that's going to dull this knife in two seconds and you need to resharpen it. So I just like to make sure I avoid that completely. And I don't like to open up the innards and you can see that they're completely intact here. So we are good to go. Let's just get this carcass over to the side. I'm gonna show you how I am going to do this today. I'm gonna to do it a little different than I normally would. And I'm gonna give a big shout out to Captain Dave Sugar and the Florida Keys right now. I watched a video of his on YouTube because we all learn on YouTube, right? That's how we learn. And I saw a really cool trick. So I'm gonna teach you guys today too. So here we go. So this fish has a big bloodline right down the middle. So what I'm gonna do is take my knife and I'm gonna make a cut down the middle like this. So now I made that cut. You can kind of see in here the bloodline. You see the bloodline in here? So what I'm gonna do now, on this side of the fish, I'm going to keep my knife edge just above that bloodline and I'm gonna work out like this. So watch. Here 
there goes that. Just like so, all the way down. This is how you loin the fish out. And that way I don't have to, you know, take my time and take the whole piece of skin off. We can just take our loins off like this. And I feel like it saves you time. I thought it was pretty cool. And I have fished with Dave Sugar before, so if you guys want to see my Florida Keys videos, check it out. He's an amazing guy, guy, uh, uh, charter captain out of Marathon, Florida. I highly recommend him once this pandemic is over. Check him out. But you can see, with that method, we kind of avoided most of, most of that red meat. We kept it on the skin, and I just went a little above and then angled down towards the skin there. So we got a beautiful loin right here. And let's just, you can see right here, I'm just going to knock out this little piece of bloodline like that and it does take practice guys I mean you're not going to get great at this overnight you know I haven't filleted that many cobia in my life but I have filleted a ton of fish in my life so over the years you get better at this so don't get frustrated at yourself just take your time practice makes perfect and with a little bit of practice and a sharp knife you will be great at this in no time so let's just go ahead and slice the steaks out and then I'm going to meet you guys in the house for the cooking with pudding portion of this video because I am freaking starving. What's up, guys? Welcome to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. Thanks so much, Dust Sizzle. Look, she flayed up these uh, cobia steaks so nice. Awesome. Today, you know, being that we're all home for the quarantine, we're gonna keep it super simple. We're just gonna, we're gonna have lunch. You know, you can have fish, it doesn't have to be dinner. I know everyone always thinks it's for dinner, but we're all home, or a lot of us are home for the quarantine. The fishing, the commercial fishermen are really having a hard time because the restaurants are not open. So you just go down to the fish store or Publix and you start buying some fish, all right? And you can have it for lunch. And you can have it for breakfast. When we went to Louisiana for Swall Fest, they're still behind the camera, she remembers that. We had a great time. And they just had shrimp and grits and everything else. Best thing I ever had, it was awesome. And if Nick from Swallfest wants to invite us back, we're happy to go. Uh, so we're just doing a super simple and healthy cobia marinade. I marinated that for a couple hours just this morning, just with some Italian dressing. I actually, we didn't have any Italian dressing. I ran to Walgreens with, <laughs> with my mask on and just used this whole bottle up and soaked it for a couple hours. So we're gonna do that. And this is gonna be, again, 10 minutes per inch, right? I always tell you. Oh, I got a trashy neighbor's dog barking again. But uh, this cobia is a very dense fish, all right? So like some other dense fishes like tuna and wahoo, you don't want to overcook it, all right? So putting cooking on the barbecue is a little risky, but we're gonna check it in about five minutes and we'll be right back. All right, guys, it's been about five minutes. Let's check it. Looking pretty good, huh? Cooking kind of a little slow. That's good. I'm gonna turn the grill up a little bit. It's probably a bad idea. Nice. You know, you can actually just tilt these 45 degrees and that'll get you your fancy grill marks. Let's do a little of that. Nope. It's okay. We don't want to overcook it. We'll give it a couple more minutes. It's touching all that hot stuff. <laughs> I have a superpower that my I don't burn and my tongue doesn't burn. So I'm pretty high, high level like that. Got myself a beer because you can't have a barbecue without beer. And I guess we'll be back in just a minute again. All right, guys, it's been about a minute or two since we flipped them, and I noticed that some of these are done. You know, so one thing I did with these before I brought them out here was I cut them into like, the steaks on a cobia come, come really thick a lot of times with the big fish, right? And so I cut these steaks in the sizes, you know, they wouldn't, they would cook nice and even. So it's very important when you cook fish, you wanna have, si have it all even. This one was a little thicker, so I'm just gonna leave it on a little bit more. As I told you, it's dent fish. You do not wanna overcook it. And we'll let that cook for about another 30 seconds or a minute, and we'll see you at the table for a delicious lunch. Time to eat. All right, that's a little ready. Dive in. Woo. Simple and healthy is good. Yeah, guy, just an hour in the Italian dressing, 10 minutes on the grill, throw on a little salad on here. Then you're having a delicious and healthy lunch. This is this is keto. Mm -hmm. This is keto, all right? So uh, super healthy, no like no carbs, and perfect for lunch while you guys are all home uh, drinking Land Shark. I'm running out exciting news for you guys. You ready? Coming soon, the Pudding Cookbook. It's gonna have all your favorite recipes, all right? We're gonna be doing we have all, the, all the Florida fishes that we're catching, the famous sauce, uh, the grill recipes, the pan recipes, 
Mm-hmm. All, different, all different fish. Yeah. Mahi, trout, Tacos, wahoo, sushi, juice. everything on there. Mm-hmm. All right? So coming soon, we're going to have pre-order probably, I don't want to say when, but next next week or two. Available real soon. All right, so that's going to fund the production of it <laughs> a yes. little bit. Yes. And so we're going to have, it's going to be an ebook at first, and then if that does well, we're going to publish it, maybe we'll get it on Amazon. There That'd you be go. Sick, That'd sick, be sick, awesome. sick. All right, so stay tuned for that. Yes. Uh, the pre-order is going to be at, on a, at a sale price, and so you guys can pre-order those. And the, the book is with the designer right now, so it should be real soon. You know, it's all done and everything. Meg Sis will help with it. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. How's the fish? Super yummy. Very light and healthy, and we always say this, but the key to a delicious, moist fish is to just not overcook it. Like, really, just don't overcook it, period. <laughs> you can't. Right. Change the texture that much. But this was cooked perfect, because Brian always cooks fish perfect. Yeah, well, one so. piece is cooked a little more, and the one piece is cooked perfect. Yeah, it's, it's just, just a little, like, tougher. Like, yeah, even, it's yeah. not necessarily change the flavor. It's just a little tougher to bite into versus the moist one. It's just really more, like, mm. flavorful. Like, it's it's delicious. It's deli- they're both delicious. They're all and, delicious. And you don't got to cut that, you don't got to cut that fish in half. Just like I would show you, just poke it with a fork, you know, and the fork should go through without... Touching flesh, so right. Pretty simple. Super light meal, super healthy, and I won't feel like I need a nap after this, so it's perfect. Right, except and for I the beer part. Get back to work, <laughs> but um, everything that you saw in this video, y'all, once again, is going to be down in that description below. So please check that out if you're interested, as well as his cooking with pudding Amazon store section until we get our official cookbook out. So that would well, be the, super. Yeah, well, cool. the cookbook's not going to sell the products, the pans and stuff. So yeah. Well, if you want the mixer, the pan. Whatever else is on there, Darcy. Yeah. So yep. the cooking with pudding Amazon page. Check it out. And uh, I'll remind you again: do all your shopping through the Amazon link for Darcyzzle. Somebody bought uh, a big depth finder the other day, and she made a, a decent amount of money. And the person who bought it didn't get charged anything extra. It's just a slight commission to Darcy because she's an Amazon affiliate. Exactly. So do all your shopping through there. Exactly. But yeah, everything that you're ever gonna need directly down below. So please go check that out. And thank you for watching this video. We are so excited to bring you some more epic adventures here real soon. We've been killing it offshore lately. we got two good videos coming up. we got up. some sick stuff. Well, so one good video. Get ready. <laughs> one good video. Get ready. Because we're going to have more than that, too. But yeah, yeah, you just, just got to put your time in on the water. That's what it's all about. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. We love each and every one of you, like always. And until our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, keep and keep on, on catching. catching. And wash your hands. <laughs> and now you got to wear a mask. <laughs> Where's your mask? You're in my circle of trust. You don't have to wear it here. (laughs) Good morning, Dark Sizzle Nation. Dark Sizzle's fishing already. Look at her. She already lost the lure to a bird. Why don't you tell, us what, tell them what we're doing down here at Dark Sizzle? Yeah, <laughs> we're down here in Broward County, Florida, which is, I don't know, about, about approximately an hour drive south of where we live. And we are on the C14 Canal, which is like a hot spot for not only bass fishing, but also for snakehead fishing. So we are freshwater, in the freshwater today. And I've got a little topwater frog that I'm throwing. And hopefully I can land one. I've gone snakehead fishing a few times, but have been unsuccessful. So the goal today is to get one and then do a catch, clean, cook snakehead. <laughs> That's the goal. We checked the fish angler app, which, uh, you know, not only logs your catches, but has all kinds of other information on there, like weather. And, you know, it just can be real windy and kind of wavy offshore. And yeah. the bite hasn't been that good. So we decided to try something different and uh, do the snakehead fishing. They're supposed to be super aggressive and great catches, great fight, and we're just lucky to be down here. Yes. And able to follow our dreams in all different ways. Creek. Set, point and set. Boom! I did it! Get away, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away from the gal. So we don't spook the rest of snakeheads over here. That, it must be the smallest snakehead someone has ever caught. Legit, 
legitimately. That's like the smallest I've ever seen in pictures or anything. Can we just get out to the middle so we don't scare the rest? There's a lot of fish making over there. They are an invasive species in this area. Check them out, looks pretty cool. He freaking choked that frog. They are very, very aggressive and they are taking over our fish populations in this area, that's for sure. But I'm so happy I caught my first snakehead. Pretty cool, within less than an hour of fishing, had quite a few blow ups this morning and finally connected on one. Sizzle, you set that hook like a champ. Dude, I, that is insane. And the hook's not connected to the nose right here, so you can't like grab the nose and pull it out. It's like buried. All right, Sizzle, I need a little one bigger than that to eat for dinner. Right. That won't fill up my, that won't fill up Papa's belly. This is really tricky fishing. Oh, baby! What did I get? I got a snakehead! Yes! Yes, dude! Get in the boat! Yeah! That's a snakehead! Let's get out there so we don't spook the rest of the fish. Alright, so this is like really fun ambush fishing, especially like this with the morning like this. But we're like right on the edges of the canal here. And now I'm finally getting the trick to like let these fish eat, actually eat these um, eat these frogs before you set the hook. I missed a couple earlier this morning, but that's a stud snakehead right there. <gasps> you just spit it. All right, so just casting it, like trying to get it on shore, this frog, and then working it along the bank. And with us drifting right back into the canal to the edge, we're spooking all the fish. And my shadow is super high, you know, very long this morning because of the sun and the angle. So anything 50 feet in front of me is getting spooked. So you just gotta be like really quiet, just work the bank and try to get your lure up on the bank and then reel it through the water and just do a steady retrieve pretty fast. But pick another snakehead, what? All right, I'm gonna try to hold him. Not having very much success this morning. But look at all those dots on him. I mean, he legit looks like a snake. Even the top of his head, if you just look at the top of his head real quick, the way his eyes are shaped and everything, he looks like a snake. And then that orange dot right on the tail, which is the standard uh, look of an actual snake head down here in South Florida. And they are invasive. So, woo, almost lost that one again. But I also wanted to mention to you guys, before I forget, it's my fish hooking Fish hook and anchor bracelets that I'm wearing here. I sell them for the holidays for kids and adults. Unisex fishing hook bracelets. They're your lucky fishing hook bracelets, at least for me. So if you wanna get them and rep your own, I hand tie every single one, including these sterling silver necklaces that I make, the anchor and the shark and a bunch of other ones on my, my website. So check that out in the description below. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, baby! Just like that, we got another. <laughs> you anchored, right? Okay. All right, so third snakehead in the boat. We got a little rain shower going on right now, filming in the rain. This guy's a little small again. All right, let's get another. Another owl. Hi. That's crazy. Oh, oh. Oh, nice fish. Stay on, stay on. Oh, that was sick. That was sick. That was sick. Heck yes. Oh my gosh, dude. So sick fishing. Woo! Bullseye snakehead in the boat! Biggest of the day! That is really exciting um, chasing these fish. <laughs> that was really cool, even with no sun. Now that we got no sun and we got the cover, it's excellent coverage for us because these fish are smart and they hang out on the shoreline right here in the foliage and the thick vegetation and they're just waiting for prey. They're, they're waiting for toads and lizards to fall into the water and small little things like this. Biggest one. Choke that thing. And you gotta literally let him eat it. So after missing a couple this morning, 
same thing. I just learned, you know, as soon as he eats it, I saw him come up behind it. He followed it for like four or five feet before he finally hit it. And then I just like lower the rod tip, let him eat it, and then set as hard as you can. And my look, my dad's lucky rod today. So thank you, dad. <laughs> All right. Now we got to get Brian one. It's not fair now. Nice. Oh, I lost him. Nope, I got him. He was coming with me. Nope. Maybe it might be a bass. I don't even know. No, it's a snake. A little one. Slaying the snakes today. Oh, my camera. Look at it. Ah! What are you doing? <laughs> It's a snakehead. Slow down. Got him! Oh, I'm gonna lose him in the weeds. I don't know if he's there. He's there. He's there. Got it done! There's a fish under there, I promise. <laughs> ah, look at that frog! That's insane. These things are so aggressive, it's not even funny. <laughs> oh! There you go! Yeah! Got something! He's in the, oh no, he's in the weeds. I'm All waiting, right. waiting for you, Brian. He's <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Yeah, nice. Captain, crazy <laughs> Captain Craig with the assist. Yes, <laughs> high five. Yeah. That's a nice right. one. That's nice. a nice one. Is it nice? That's a nice one. So we've, we picked, if you guys don't remember, remember Captain Crazy Craig. Hi everybody. We used to go fishing all the time and uh, so we picked him up on the way. He lives right here. That's yeah. a nice one. Yeah. That's a nice one. You're gonna wanna wear it Going in the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. I almost didn't have the thing on. That's a nice one. That's a. Oh man, it was one. Come on, crazy Craig. That was crazy. That's another nice one. Oh my gosh! Here come you little heads. <laughs> that one wanted to get back in the water. <laughs> we do need Look that extra third person to help. Look how beautiful he is. This is beautiful. Craig's honey hole snakehead canal where he lives. It's our backyard. We literally have to just come back here like every day. It's a good place to go when it's rough offshore and you're kind of bored and want to do a little freshwater fishing and catch some prehistoric monsters. Yeah. You had your eyes open. <laughs> Keep it tight, try not to lose them. I've only got 10 pound braid. Nice one. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest the one. Biggest one. <laughs> yeah, baby! Yeah! Nice. Yeah! That was so sick. Biggest fish of the day in broad daylight. Threw it over there by one of those culvert pipes or uh, sprinkler pipes and he just crushed it. And I thought I was gonna lose him in the weeds, but I could feel like, I felt he was a bigger fish and he is. He's got that broad head on him. Definitely a breeder right there. And uh, just all lit up. We have a meal tonight. We've got plenty in the grizzly cooler now. So it's time to go home and clean these bad boys and cook these bad boys. Straight slant. We are back at the house, really long day at the water, and as you can see, we are waiting for the rain to pass today, and it's dark now, so I'm trying to get this done as night is falling, and hopefully you guys can see me fillet these fish. Well, I'm gonna fillet one for you. I'm gonna pick the biggest snake head out of my grizzly cooler, 60 quart grizzly cooler, keeping them iced down. Here's the big boy I caught last. Nice fish. Let's get him in the light so you can actually see him. They are super, super slimy. Let me just wipe my hands real quick, and I'm gonna fillet them. Бросайте курить в новом году с Никаретте. Выберите свой формат.
Okay, to start, I'm gonna be using my go-to knife, which is my seven inch Lawaya saltwater coated fillet knife from Smith's Consumer Products. Don't forget about my coupon code, Darsizzle15, 15% off everything on their website, smithsproducts.com. Here we go. So want a really sharp knife, especially with these bad boys. They have scales all the way down, including on the top of their head. So what you wanna do is, actually, you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that but it's a hard, hard head. It's probably harder than concrete. So you wanna make a cut right behind the pec fin here, then just angle it up towards their head, like so. Turn that knife right around, and then just keep it underneath the scales so you're not dulling your knife too quickly, and you just wanna run it right along that backbone. That sharp knife is key here. And these Smith knives get it done. So all the way down to the tail. And I'm gonna pop it through just like any other fish I would do. And I have him on his side, even though he's oddly shaped and he has a really big, broad head. They sit kind of weird, but you're just gonna have to make the most of it. So I'm really curious to see what this meat looks like. I heard it's delicious. Probably a lot of you guys are gonna freak out, but I'm just so excited to see what it looks like and how it's gonna taste, of course. So nice long strokes, just like I'm doing. I'm just gonna slap that meat right off. Oh my gosh, it looks amazing crazy so just nice long strokes wow look at that meat that's the first snake i've I, snake head i have ever filleted and the crazy thing about this too is that recently there was an article in the news and all over social media about these snake heads and them recently being caught in the state of georgia now this is a completely different fish this is not the snake head that you think that is being caught in georgia this is the bullseye snakehead that is really only found down here in South Florida as an invasive species. And they are being now found since 2000, since down in the, they originated down in the Coral Springs, Pompano Beach area, and they basically were released in the C-14 Canal, and they are thriving. And ever since then, they've been caught in the Miami Canals, freshwater only, by the way, Miami Canals all the way down all the way up to West Palm Beach. I've even heard of reports up there, which is pretty wild. So they definitely are thriving and they love it down here. But I mean, look at that meat. It looks freaking amazing. It looks like a crappie or a snapper, your standard grouper. It just, it even feels amazing. It's gonna be so awesome to eat. I can't wait. It's probably gonna be Brian's new favorite, favorite freshwater fish to eat, watch. All right, so here we go. Same knife, we're just gonna skin it right off. And once again, you want that really sharp knife, especially with this fish, because they're so tough to fillet. And it's coming right off. That meat looks so good. Wow. All right, there we go. Look at that. Just absolutely gorgeous meat. And this one was the biggest one, so it's a really nice thick piece of, thick piece of meat. And there you go, there's the skin all done. And of course, just like any other fish, he does have a little bit of pin bones that I feel right here. So I'm just gonna knock those out real quick. But other than that, there seems to be no bones anywhere else, which is pretty cool. Can't wait to go back and catch some more for you guys. But yeah, so this is the bullseye snakehead and this is not the Northern snakehead that they talked about in Georgia and all over the news lately. There we go, just knock that out. Those are some of the scales. You can see those giant scales, they're just huge. And they're covering his whole head too. So just a really aggressive, mean fish. We're gonna finish up the other side of this bad boy and the rest in the cooler. I'm gonna meet you guys in the house for the cooking portion of this video with Chef Pudding. Nice job filleting those snakeheads, those bullseye snakehead dust sizzle. And welcome to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. I wanna go over a couple things first, guys. We got a great, delicious recipe. We've already made a delicious pineapple salsa. Come on in, our sizzles. You're standing on by the side. We wanna see how pretty you are. Look at her hair down. Did you get a haircut tomorrow? No. Wednesday. Later on this week. <laughs> Later this week. I'm not getting a haircut, but I'm just getting trim. a touch Just up. a trim. You're getting this on Tuesday, the day after you I see this. I washed my hair, so it looks good. It's about time. It's usually All such right. a rat's nest from fishing. <laughs> All right, so I made, we made a delicious, salsa based with pine pineapple. And it was just a couple of ingredients, pineapple, and what's that spice from the garden? Cilantro. Cilantro. And some delicious coconut uh, milk, not coconut milk, coconut cream. Yes. Cream of coconut. Cream of coconut. It was delicious and sweet. We never had, I ate it by I itself never, out of the bowl. Delicious. Never bought that in my life. And it's amazing. Right. Way too much sugar for me. And we got another thing going on. Part of that recipe is cut, cutting up some hot peppers. And Darcy doesn't like hot peppers, so I kind of put them to the side got on my hands and then I picked my nose a little bit 
And now, like, my eyes and my nose is, like, running. So if, if, if you see anything weird, that's what it is. I always warn him about not picking his face <laughs> after handling peppers, but he doesn't seem to learn his lesson. No, I didn't learn my Never. Lesson. My nose is <gasps> burning. So fancy. Yes, I'm, and we have a couple uh, mailbox items I want to show. We've been totally delinquent uh, in opening our mail. Okay, this is from Alden, a beautiful wood bowl. He saw us making that sushi, and he said, you need a wood or a bamboo bowl. Yes. It's got bamboo in the bottom. Yes. Thank you very much, Alden. We're going to use it next time we catch a Wahoo. Awesome. And also, James McCarty sent us some cool little uh, pocket knives and a nice note. Thank you so much. He's a veteran. He says it's our sizzle. I, I, I read it already. I got oh, I see the, the knife. Oh, the knife. Here you go. Oh, my gosh. So uh, he cool. is a veteran and has, been, has a little bit of problems, but he's gonna, he's been inspired to get back into fishing. So we're so happy for that. Uh, happy to inspire somebody to do some fishing. And thank you for your service. And we really appreciate the gift and this nice letter. I read the whole thing. Yeah, Look cool. How cool that is. So cool, James. Thanks for sharing. You hooked us up. All right, so now let's get to this fish. First, again, I told you we got the sauce already made. Now we're going to blacken it. And Darcy got a bunch of spices here. I'm going to mix together. Darcy, tell me what they are as I put them in. What is this? Uh, that is uh, garlic. We got some garlic. Garlic salt. We got to have a lot of garlic. Garlic salt. What's this? That is kosher salt. Kosher salt. What's so fancy around here? It was just Yom Kippur, so I guess that's good. That is oregano. Oregano. Got to have oregano. Boom. Oregano and basil. Sorry. And what's this? That's thyme. Thyme. That is black pepper. Black pepper. Looks fine ground. Paprika. Paprika. Cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper. And that's it. Now we're going to mix this up a little bit, and we're going to make like a... Uh, so this is like a traditional snakehead recipe, more particularly for the northern snakehead, but of course it goes great with any snakehead, of course. So that is a blackened seasoning. It's a blackened seasoning, and then we're going to cook it up in the skillet, and then we're going to put the uh, salsa on it. That's it. You guys can see that? Looks pretty good. All right, now I've already got the fish here. Can you see that, guys? Let me move it to the camera for you. There you go. Here we go. Look, good. And I'm just going to... I'm gonna cut a nice layer of this on here. Really pat it in. You dried it, right? Oh yeah, it's dry. You gotta dry the fish so it sticks better. Yeah. Next, we're gonna cook it, all right? I already had this pan, has been preheating. I'm gonna put a little oil in here. Let that heat up. Pan's already boiling hot. All right, here we go. We're gonna put the spice side down. Sounds good. Now, I always tell you guys, I'm real good at cooking this fish, and that's because I keep track of it, and I check it. You can see when the white starts to come around the edges, and you can also, again, like I always say, you can poke your fork in it. And this is a fairly thin fish, at least these smaller fish we're cooking right now. And again, 10 minutes per inch for a fish, and these are gonna be done in just a couple minutes. I like to set the timer, just so I have an idea. All right, so my timer went off, and you guys can see that there's some white around the edges, particularly the thinner ones, and they're almost actually done. So I got the fat ones in the middle, and the skinny ones down the outside. I'm gonna start flipping the skinny ones first. All right, I... <coughs> oh, excuse me. I got some peppers up my nose, as I said. All right, so I'm gonna poke these little ones I can already see. When I poke my fork, they go all the way through, and they're good. So these are gonna start taking off right away. All right, those look done. Let's put that salsa on there and get to eating. I'm gonna put some of that right on there. Look, oh boy, look at that, guys. That's delicious. We made some broccoli, I'm gonna put it on there, and we'll see you at the table. All right, Darcy, let's get to eating and it's drinking. It's time for the part of the video you guys have been waiting for, to try the snake head for the first time ever. Dive in. I've been waiting for this part to have my beer. You gotta do it too. He always says to do me first, but it's both of us. The ladies first. The table's filming, not you. <laughs> Dive in. <laughs> I mean, you put the salsa on almost anything, it's gonna taste good. Mm -hmm. But. Well, look, I'm gonna taste it without the salsa too. That's a good idea. I was gonna cook it in butter maybe. I just saw the fish is white. It's medium firm. It's flaky. Super good. I'm not just saying that. I'm telling you the truth around here. But, <coughs> I just choked on a little bit of fish. When we tell you the truth around here, especially if it's not gonna be good, we'll tell you, but this is out of this world. It's very similar to crappie, right? Better. I think it's a little firmer. It's actually, that's not medium firm, it's... Better. Medium, firm, firm. Like north, northeast. What? It's fairly firm, the meat. North, not, ba not in a bad way. 
they get it. Okay. Well, it's similar to like grouper and snapper too. It's it's really, it's really good. The good. texture is delicious. And in, and Brian's right. The blackened seasoning is a little too spicy for me, but I mean, I'm dealing with it. It's no big deal. She doesn't like spicy. I like spicy. Mmm. That salsa on the top is a must. It's it delicious. Is bomb. Perfect mixture. So I think you can probably use this recipe for almost any fish. Mm -hmm. We used it for the snakehead. Again, that's a bullseye snakehead, not the northern snakehead everyone's tripping on uh, yes. with the recent news stories, okay? These have been down here 20 years, like Darcy said, and right. uh, they're really taking over that kind of area, but they're not spreading around like nuts. Yeah, and just so you know, the FWC, the Florida Wildlife Commission, does not say on their website to actively kill these fish. A lot of people honestly release these fish back into the waterway. You're just not allowed to transport them to a new like canal or a place alive. They're supposed to be released back into the same water that you caught them in. We killed them but all. We killed them all. Yeah. Um, but go ahead and comment your below your thoughts on the invasive species and what you would do because the FWC doesn't recommend to kill them. So what would you do? Would you release them all or would you kill them all? So hopefully y'all are not mad at us because we did kill this invasive exotic species. <laughs> <laughs> but hope you guys enjoyed this cat's clean cook. I'm about to devour the rest of this because we are starving and we're going fishing tomorrow. So. Thank you all so much for watching. Check all the links down below. Everything that you're ever going to need is there. And until our next adventure. Have a land shark and. Yes, chase the land shark, <laughs> follow your dream, and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Oh, let me show you something. Hold on. Another fish on. That is the fish we came for. Whoa. I think I got a fish, but I feel you. I think. Got something. It's coming up. Oh, it's a nice fish. Looks like a mutton. All right, check it out, guys. First fish in the day of the day. Broke off the skunk. Beautiful juvenile mutton snapper. We are anchored in a spot here. And this is the first fish. What you should do when you're bottom fishing is anchor. That's the best way to get to bigger quality fish. So we're gonna drop right back down, let this bad boy go, and hopefully get a keeper here real soon. I'm excited. Right species. Get up here. Stay hooked. All right, cleared the fish off the bottom. That's the key here, especially when you're catching groupers and snapper, because they're smart and they'll wrap you up on the bottom. So you gotta try to get them off the bottom as soon as you possibly can. All right, coming up, coming up, coming up. Oh, beauty. I, I might know. be, my keep, it's gonna be close. He's close. Oh, that's a keeper. Yeah? I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it. Let me see what happens here. <laughs> Could be wrong. It's been a long time since I've caught a keeper, mutton snapper, and I was used to big ones in the Florida Keys, but they gotta be 18 inches. And this guy just crushed a dead goggle eye. Dead, you can see the goggle eye hanging out of his mouth there. But you'll get quality fish if you use bigger baits. He's gonna keep 19. Just under 18, 19. They gotta be 18 inches long. Yeah, he's gonna keep. Alright, so he's about 18 and a half inches. I'll take it. That fish fought hard for his size. Beautiful fish. Check him out. He's all blown up because I reeled him up as fast as I possibly could. Oh my god! Oh, let me show you something. Hold on. It scared me. I had to drop it. He's there. Another fish on. This is actually Brian's rod. Hooked him up left and right. This current's just starting to move more and more. And anchored in this position like here, we can really fish the bottom correctly. And it's working out so far. First mutton in the boat. And I got scared to drop that fish because he had a big old crab sticking out of his mouth. Just hungry, aggressive fish. They're eating crabs, and then a second later, they're eating our baits. So we're just gonna get we're getting into them now. Ooh, color! It's a beautiful snapper. Looks like he's a yellow. Grab the rod. All right. Hey, that might be a keeper. It's gonna be real close. Looks like they just, these yellow snapper have been around lately in big numbers. It looks like they were just cleaning off the rest of what was left of this bait, which is usually what happens. He's definitely 12. He is definitely 12. I guess we could keep him. Yeah. All right. He is a total of 14 inches long. 
The really cool thing about these coolers is the fact that they come with an actual real like ruler, ruler that is <laughs> accurate. So always make sure you get something like that and Grizzly coolers are made in the USA. So support the US and get an affordable cooler. John. Nice one. Get him up, get him up. Oh, he's digging. Reel that fish, don't bend the hook. Come in this way. Go in this way. This fish is a strong fish. He wants to go where he wants to go. All right, so just the last half an hour, every bait down is getting smashed pretty quickly. We started off with those dead sardines and then I worked it up to dead goggle eyes and stuff we had in our freezer. Um, left over and so usually bigger baits you get quality fish and this one just smashed it excited to see what it is and I'm not gonna say the S word because we are having good luck so far color coming up mister coming up Woo! in the boat he's gonna be he's close. gonna be a keeper you think I'm calling it, <laughs> calling it. All right, you see that? He just spit that up. He just barfed up that big piece of gog I dropped down. And the key, when you put pieces of gog down without their head, you run that circle hook right through the spine bone so they can't pull it off. So you can see that just came back intact. Nice, we are crushing them. Muttons for days. All right, let me pop this real quick and we're gonna get a measure. Oh. I also wanted to mention that you got, that these beautiful fish, you guys can come out here and do the same up here in Palm Beach County. I'm gonna post it exactly on the Fish Angler app, exactly where I'm anchored up and catching these buttes. We got chum out, you guys can come out here and do the same and we're just using dead bait today, no live bait. No live bait needed. Please keep, please keep, please be a keeper. He's gonna keep. About 18 and a half. He is going to keep. Nice. More dinner in the boat. Not complaining whatsoever. Let's get him in the Grizzly cooler. And yeah, check out uh, Grizzly if you want to get like your own cool custom latches. They, they sell them on their website. I thought it was so cool. All right, we're gonna get a nice mixed bag. All right, I'm gonna drop a line right back down. What I'm gonna do now, because we have no current, I'm going to switch out my weight real quick on my three-way. Um, setup I've got going on here. That's a good segue though, so let me tell them all about the gear you're doing while you do that real quick. Starting off, we do this quite a bit, but we want to show you guys this nice rig. This is a uh, Baxel Ocean Max reel. We're not sponsored by them any longer, but Darcy's been using this reel for quite a few years and it's pretty good. And uh, we got a Maxell rod with that. A lot of people use like a jigging rod for bottom fishing actually, so that really just depends on what your situation is. We have this spool with 50 pound braid, and then she has like a top leader of uh, like 50 pound Fluoro to her rig, and I'll show you that. And that goes up. Oh, Whoa. get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, go, 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 go. Nice fish. Get the weight up, get the weight up, get up here. Come on, Sizzle. I'm rocked up. Let him swim, let him swim. I'm rocked up. All right, so we're gonna let the line go slack and see maybe I'll swim out of his hole. Hold on. You shouldn't be rocked up because we're not, not worried to break off. All right, good. Now we're using some technique. Let's do it. This is your black grouper. The black grouper. Nice and smooth. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. You're not moving. Locked up again. Oh, Let's geez. fight him. Let's fight him. This is the way you use your skill. Now we know we can't be the brit because on the rig I'm going to no, show you. fish is in a hole. I can feel them. Yeah. The, the weight just hit bottom again. I, I probably let out another 30 feet. Let's see if we can get him out. That is a nice fish. I, could, I felt him. I mean, he was head digging all the way down. Darn, somebody should have jumped on that rod as soon as it reeled because he had enough time to get right back to his hole. Well, I can't, you know, I got a 50, I got a 50 foot leader on that. <laughs> no, I know, but we had, we let it sit. But anyways, you're right. He, you know. He has so much room to swim with. Oh, I want to get a bait down. This is just going to be really tough. 
See what you can do. It could be a Goliath, so you might not even be able to get him up. See what you can do. No. It's done. Is this fish on there? Up. I don't know. All right, let's see how, just leave it. Let's see how it goes. All right, so let's hold open that. Bottom. All right, let's leave him for a minute. Oh, jeez. That right, sucks. So she has this leader, and I'm going to show you. All right, it goes to this three-way rig. This is her main line that comes down to her leader. You can see there's a bead on there, and a, this, and then the leader is right here to a 5 on Mustad hook. And this is the weight line, and you got a loop on there. So this breaks off. It's a lighter test, all right? So let's see how we do. She has about a 20-foot leader. I put a 50-pound leader on that, 50 a 50-foot leader, because we want to see how, the, how that would work, and it worked. Watch out. But now we can't get the fish up. Let's try again. He hits around something. Get him up. He's coming? Yeah, he's coming. All right, all right. Less than drag. Less than the drag now. He's good. Less than your drag. Put your gloves on. No nut? Oh, okay. Well, I got a 30 foot leader. Get the net. I got it. It's not that big. He's a nice fish. No, oh, he's a nice fish. Yeah! Ooh. Nice job! Rodney caught the fish. Circle hook doing his job. Yeah! Dude, we got so lucky catching that fish. You got lucky. You got him ripped. You got the got it wrapped off or something. I couldn't ripped it off. Look at the circle hook. Perfect. Perfect. What? Brian! All right, here we go. Is that beautiful fish. So when I caught that red grouper before, we thought this might have been another grouper. So what you do when you something rocks you up and muttons, you do the same exact thing. They don't go into holes, but they end up wrapping you up in sea fans and things down there. So we free spooled it, let him swim around, do his thing. When Brian picked it up to reel again, that fish came clear and we got so lucky catching this fish. Circle hook was right in the corner of the mouth. That is the fish we came for. That is a nice fish for this area. That's probably a solid three pounder. A little more than that. See so guys, that's real. That's how you fish. That was actual yeah. skill. Yeah. You gotta have well, you got that fish up. I tried it two or three times and it was still rocked no, up you gotta have hard. The, you got to have the experience, then, guys, to, to let that fish go and have the patience. Right. That's and then all Brian, it was. And then Brian was like, it was wrapped on something. I got it. And he freed it. So, and he was able to get that fish up. But slack tide, no current now, and the bigger fish are chewing. We also have a minor moon phase, and all this information can be found on the Fish Angler app. So come fish this area. Come out whether there's a ripping tide or no tide. You have to be out here to catch them. You guys want to climb aboard? Yeah. <laughs> you guys aren't pirates, are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Bahamas. I take out my shotgun. What's up everybody? We are here at the house. It's time to fillet up the beautiful mutton snapper, the biggest one of the day. I already just got done filleting the rest of them and we are going to be making a really awesome recipe which I'm so excited about. Today I'm using my 7 inch Lawaya tapered flex tapered fillet knife and this is saltwater coated which is an awesome knife. But guys, I also wanted to let you know about my calendars. I haven't mentioned them as much. My 2020 uh, saltwater and freshwater calendars are now available on my website for pre-orders only. Please check that out if you're interested and you get a little discount right now while they are on pre-order. So this knife is my go-to knife here. We're just laying this fish a standard, the standard way I would flay any fish. Break all these pin bones up here in the front and snapper will get your knife dull quickly but you guys know how much I love to catch them and we love to eat them. And the recipe today is going to be an island inspired recipe. We're going to be encrusting the fish with coconut flakes. And I'm so excited, it's gonna be delicious. A lot of you guys have been trying our recipes too, which I appreciate. You guys have been sending me messages on Instagram and on Facebook, and it's totally cool that you guys are using our recipes too. So here is our beautiful mutton snapper filet, same knife. Once again, you just want a really sharp knife to get the job done correctly. I can't say it enough. And we're just gonna fillet this bad boy right off. Really can't go wrong 
with filleting it like so. I know a lot of you guys like to cook fish whole, but we're spoiled down here in Florida. We get a lot of awesome fish down here that we get to eat all the time. So we like to take advantage of these beautiful fillets. All right, there we go. There's the skin. I'm just gonna break these pin, take these pin bones out real quick. And then this fish is ready to go in the house. And we are going to make that awesome recipe with a key lime sauce, which is gonna be so amazing. And we're gonna even be using land shark lager for the recipe. All right, there we go. There's that beautiful filet. I'm gonna fillet off the other side here. And if I find something interesting in the st stomach, I'll show you. Otherwise, I'll meet you in the house for, with the cooking with pudding portion of this video. Another great job filleting those fish dusters. And welcome to another episode of Cooking with Pudding. And uh, like we did in the last episode, guys, I, we gotta get rid of some of this, not get rid of, but we gotta open some mail. So I got, we're gonna do this real quick. First thing is some Louis Farola. He's one of our great patrons. He sent us some lures, some skidawogs. He must have saw Darcy doing all that uh, top water action, and he gave us a bunch of beautiful lures and some nice hooks. So thank you so much, Louis. And also, we got another great gift from Alden. And you guys are gonna love this. Hold on one second. A chef's hat. Thanks, Alden. Look at this. Cooking with Pudding. It's officially the Cooking with Pudding segment. <laughs> Official. It has that beautiful Thanks, Alden. <laughs> we gotta fix it a little bit. I love it, Alden. It's awesome. I love it so much. It's awesome. Uh, Alden sends us all kind of great things all the time. We still gotta do that bass challenge. He sent us some fishing rods, and we're gonna get to that. Yes. Uh, maybe when Aaron gets here for Thanksgiving. Yes. Love you guys that. can see now my hair is poofy. <laughs> My flat yeah, hair went a, away. In the last in the last episode, gosh, you got a haircut. It's very yes. exciting stuff. Yes. And all right, so today, like Darcy said a little bit, when she was cleaning the fish, we're doing an awesome recipe. We're going to uh, coat the mutton with coconut, unless Darcy's eating all the coconut already, because she's been chowing down. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Sweet and coconut flakes. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to mix some stuff together right here. The, the well, we already made the sauce. Yes, actually, absolutely. I almost missed that part. We made a delicious sauce that goes on this. And uh, here's a little bit of a B-roll for it. I, I uh, zested the ginger and the uh, limes and lime juice and some cayenne pepper and a whole bunch of nice things. Mix it up and we're chilling that right now, okay? So, back to the, uh, the coating. We're gonna have some flour. Self-rising. It's self-rising flour. Couple eggs. And what is this, cayenne pepper and salt? Yep. Perfect. And the most important ingredient Lanshaw lager, all right? A whole uh, cup and a half. Boop, 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 boop. So it's gonna be the most delicious meal you could ever have. Now I'm just gonna mix that up. All right, while you guys are away, <laughs> I got a pan with some oil in here heating up and I got an arrangement over here. You can see I got the fish, then I got that mixed up mess I just made, and then I got all the coconut. So we're gonna dredge it and cook it. Here we go. Whoa, this is thick. Oh my lord, this is gonna be so good. Beer and coconut. I don't <laughs> oh, you go. And he's supposed to drip this off like this, I guess, because it's gonna be way too much. See that? I'm going for it. Woo. Whoa, this is gonna be ridiculous, Star Sizzle. There's like four cups of coconut in here or something ridiculous. Whoa, look. We're gonna need a bigger pan, girl. No. We do need to get a cast iron pan though, I guess. Everyone keeps telling me, you're, you're Googan. I'm a cooking Googan for uh, doing this in a, in a, in a one of these, you know, Guggen pans with the coating on it. All right, I'm gonna put this latest right in here too. I'm just gonna let that sit. I'm gonna put it on for three minutes, put the timer on for three minutes, and we'll see you guys in three minutes. Быть предпринимателем значит превращать вызовы в новые возможности. Просто перенесите настройки своих компаний в Google рекламу, чтобы привлечь больше новых клиентов. Mmm. <laughs>